what's up guys, it's Harry here from Salute the Magpie and today I'll be doing my own top 5 albums of 2016. 2016 was a really good out a year for music, both newcomers and established bands alike making some really good releases. For my top 5, I'll be basing it mostly on how much I listen to these albums. I mean they all have some absolutely cracking content to it, but I'll see for repeatability and that I just couldn't get enough of it. Right then guys, number five on my list is Periphery with Select Difficulty. This is the third album released by Periphery uh, and I must say I absolutely adore this band. They are tech metal gods, they have some really high content, I mean their production, their actual technical ability and the music itself, it is all really good. One thing to note about Periphery is that they are a very DIY band, I mean they can all play their instruments incredibly well, not only that is that they produce their own albums as well, getting in there with their own little studio, their own techniques and you can, this really shows on the album, like the drum production is incredible, uh, including the guitars and this craftsmanship shows uh, and it, what holds it all together really and makes it my one of my top fives of this year. It's fair to say that this album can be most enjoyed from listening like all the way through. I, I don't really see it as an album with different tracks in it, I see it more as like a flowing piece of artwork. Uh, sometimes you don't even know when one track ends and the other starts because it just flows in quite seamlessly really. It kind of like has its ups and downs where it will be absolutely heavy and thrashy and then at other points it is very more atmospheric, a bit more thoughtful and it's kind of like puts you in a bit of a trance uh, and this is what I love about that album. It, it's so different in points but it is just periphery to the heart. Next up on the list, number four for my album of 2016, I'll go with uh, Light We Made by Balance and Composure. I've been a long term fan of Balance and Composure uh, since their release of Separation actually, that's a really really good album, a good grounding work. Uh, then we've got The Things We Think We're Missing, that has to be one of my all time uh, favourite albums ever. So then when I heard that they're releasing an album in 2016 I was super excited, very anticipating to see what they could come up with and to be fair to say I was not disappointed at all. It does take it in a slightly different direction though, the band's sound, it's a bit more shoegazy, a bit more pensive. Uh, a bit more laid back and there's like hardly any uh, kind of shouting vocals by the vocalist. More replaced by more kind of melodies with like undercurrent melodies as well. Uh, it still retains like their staple reverby, completely washed out sound which is what mainly draws me to this band. I did a review of this album earlier in the year, a uh, link will be in the description so if you want to see a bit more, uh, we'll hear a bit more about the actual music on this album. Uh, check it out there. I've definitely had this album on repeat during 2016. The main reason I like this album so much is that Balance could have just done a repeat of their previous albums, kept to their kind of winning formula. They have changed their kind of style and direction, but with keeping their roots to their sound. With bringing in different elements to their music, it kind of can draw in fans from other areas. I mean, with the success they already have, they've, they've done, they're doing a US tour at the moment. Uh, they did announce a UK tour but they cancelled that unfortunately to my much much pain in my heart. But it'll be interesting to see where they go from here, uh, it'll keep us on our toes and especially as a fan it just makes things a lot more interesting. And talking about a change in sound, this brings us into my number three choice of album of the year. Let Live with If I'm the Devil. Now Let Live have been one of those bands that are just playing kind of like bubbling under the surface and like breaking out every now and then. Everyone's heard a track or like uh, knows of them of some sort just because usually of Jason's crazy, crazy antics. Now if you guys have listened to previous Let Live albums, you'll know that they are like a crazy ass punk band. Jason, uh, Jason the frontman, uh, if you've been to a live show, he gets right, right into the thick of it, jumping on, jumping on a crowd, throwing cabs and guitars into the audience, smashing up everything on stage. But with the album I'm a Devil, he reels in all that aggression and makes it a more kind of pensive and an emotional experience, kind of showing off his personality and what what kind of emotions he wants to get across more. It kind of is, it feels like it's a bit more of an incarnation of, of his personality rather than his aggressive side, uh, which I really like and which I think is a great evolution to what Let Live is all about really. Quite a lot of fans were like expecting another hard hitting, fast paced punk album, but it, this one's way more soulful, way more to think about uh, and I think it's a great, um, addition to, to what Let Live has to has to offer to us really. 
Some standout tracks on this album are New Romantics. I mean, it's still got that fast paced feel to it, especially in the bass line. Uh, but then you get like taken back with some of the tracks uh, like Foreign, Foreign Cab Rides is one of my favorite on the album. That's a really kind of mood set in emotional song. And Good Morning America, that has a really quite intense uh, message behind it really about like pre police br brutality and all of that. It has a bit of everything for all the listeners. If you're an old school Let Live fan, or if you're just getting into them or want to hear it, something at least a little bit different. Right then guys, we're getting to squeaky bum time now. Uh, number two, if, you're, uh, if you've been watching our channel that you know these guys will be popping up sometime soon. Uh, my number two is Basement with Promise Everything. Now Basement went on hiatus at the end of 2012, just after they released the album uh, Colour Me and Kindness. And this is uh, just when I started getting into them actually, unfortunately. I listened to the album Colour Me and Kindness, I was like, holy shit, this is an amazing band. Uh, looked on their website or whatever they had to see if they had any gigs coming up and it was like nothing, they just like disappeared off the face of the earth. Then the uh, guys came back in 2014, started playing some more shows. Uh, I think this is purely because uh, people were starting to discover them while they were on hi hiatus and were like, we need these guys back. Uh, so then they started playing a few more shows and then surprisingly re they released a, a little EP called Further Sky which I, I, I really got behind, really liked the, there was only about three or four tracks on it but it was enough to sate my like basement hunger and then I was elated to know that they were releasing a full, full blown album, uh, Promise Everything. Uh, this album was released in January 2016 and that kind of says something that uh, for such an early release that it ends up being one of my top five of the of the whole year. That is how much uh, I really like this band. The album kicks off with uh, Brothers Keeper, which uh, uh, sounds like it would be quite a good like intro to, to like a YouTube channel or something, uh, but that's none of my business. This album has all the classic elements that make up uh, a Basement album. Uh, it kind of like a throwback from the 90s kind of grunge feel, but then also in its tracks listing, it has some that throws it a bit off guard, like Oversized, which is way more chill, way more pensive, uh, quite different to anything they've released before. And then it's still got all the massive riffy tunes uh, and the album ends solidly on uh, Promise Everything and Halo, which just, it's a nice rounding off to the album as a whole. I've got to say, it's not as good as Colour Me and Kindness, but then is anything ever as good as Colour Me and Kindness? It's just really good to see these guys back on the scene and this album has definitely cemented them as a band to uh, be staying around. So they've been making um, some of good festival appearances, Leeds and Reading, and this year they're tackling Download Festival, they're entering new territory. It can only get better for a basement really, so I'm really looking forward to see what uh, the future holds for them. Basement, all day, every day. If you guys know me personally, then you'll have no surprise of who I'm giving this top spot to. It is All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us uh, Architects. They're the best band around right now and quite possibly have just released the best uh, album ever. In my opinion, Architects are just one of the best bands around at the moment and All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us just can't really trump that in 2016. One thing you can't really gloss over when talking about Architects is uh, the tragic loss of Tom Searle. Uh, which is an absolute shame, especially, as I said, I think 2016 was, was the year for Architects and unfortunately he hasn't uh, been there to see it come to fruition really. But moving on from that, the album is superbly written in terms of technical skill, emotion and also the, the messages that it kind of uh, puts forward, not only uh, socially but also uh, personally like emotively to do with, with Tom as well. Architects have definitely had some ups and downs over their career on their album releases and it's definitely not been a smooth transition to their success that they have right now. Uh, it was on the album Lost Forever, Lost Together where they really found their sound, found their like forte and uh, All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us is just an expansion on that I feel. It's like they've found their winning formula and they've just perfected it, made it bigger, better. And really I feel it is the, the pinnacle of uh, what they have achieved so far. The album starts off with Nihilist, which kicks off straight away by exploding in your face. Uh, it's just heavy as, 
and then it kind of dips down for a second, uh, all the instrumentation cuts out and you just hear Sam's vocal shout, all our gods have abandoned us. And from that point on, you're just in the palm of the hand of, of architects. Like the whole album from then, uh, you just, you're just immersed into it all. There's some really good standout tracks like uh, Downfall, which is quite a politically heavy song with a really memorable kind of main riff. You've got Gone With The Wind, which on retrospect, when you know the events that have happened with Architects, it's a really emotional song about uh, Tom himself. Another standout track on that album is Match Made In Heaven with some really cool uh, guitar riffs in it. The style of songwriting that comes across on this whole album is incredible. It's, it's not only emotional, but it's technically brilliant. I can't fathom and I can't get that point across much, uh, anymore. It's technically brilliant. Then the whole album uh, kind of gets wrapped up, if you like, with the song Memento More, which is an absolute epic song. It's about eight minutes long. Uh, it starts off with this kind of synthesized noise, if you will, that kind of gets you on your edge of your seat, no, not knowing what's to come. Uh, and then it gets into like the real, the real core of the song, and it's it's a really quite emotional uh, architect's number that then dies away, and you think the track's ended, and then it just explodes into this like blast beat. It just reels in the whole album and what the whole album's like emotion is about. It's just a really good way to finish off this kind of like saga and, and, and encapsulate what the architect sound is, is all about. I know it's not just me that has these kind of feelings towards this band as well. Uh, they've really risen in popularity. Uh, a lot of reviews, a lot of other uh, music media sites as well say that this is like the crowning achievement of architects uh, and also are rating it as one of the best releases of 2016. So it's definitely not undeserved and uh, it's something that the guys should really be proud of and I know they are. Uh, it's an absolute incredible release and it's just really quite good for, it's a British band as well, like the progression of uh, British metal and like where uh, the creative industry lies now. It's just such a, a good thing to, to like have. I've been blasting this album uh, ever since I got it on release day actually. I got it on CD and it went straight into my car and it's very rarely come out of the CD player in my car actually for uh, what six months it's been out that's probably all I've been listening to I mean absolute repeat I know every song uh, in and out and I've not even got bored of it yet it's still in my car right now so the fact that they can release something that has the playability like repeat playability to it that you won't think oh I've had enough of that now it's an achievement in itself and one thing to add that to that as well is that on each listen I always find a little nuance or a little uh, drum beat or gu little guitar sound that I didn't notice before that just keeps adding interest to it and it just shows that this album is like really deep with the actual content within, within it and, it, and it's, good, it's good all around like to listen to for listeners and people that like listen to music generally with their ears. So then guys, that has been my top five albums of 2016. To keep up to date, check out our social media links in the description. I've been Harry, and I'll see you in the next one.